We have lots of headlock escapes in these old catch wrestling, pro wrestling matches. Because they were scripted matches, they were meant to have a lot of reversals so the action could just keep continuing. Um, in addition to the fact that headlocks are, as modern grapplers know, um, headlocks aren't exactly the hardest position to get out of. When you have someone who trains specific headlock sequences and they know how to make them really dangerous and they're not just doing it the way an untrained school bully would, um, there's a lot of potential for headlocks. But um, for these scripted matches and for amateurs, headlocks are more or less just built to be escaped. And in this case, this headlock is indeed escaped when Ed Strangler Lewis tries putting one of many headlocks on Dick Shikot, and Dick Shikot turns it not only into an escape, but into a spread eagle punishment hold. And this spread eagle punishment hold is kind of a variation of what moderns would call a banana split or an electric chair. So it starts with a nice leg scoop. He gets uh, kind of an ankle lock grip on Ed Strangler Lewis's left leg, and then Dick Shikot uses one of his own legs knee down to pin down Ed Strangler Lewis's right leg. So in modern application, you can, you can definitely go knee down, but you can also use the shin. And interestingly enough, this, this um, as it's sort of a position, sort of a submission is taught in some traditional jiu-jitsu curriculum, not necessarily uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu ones. I've, I've never learned this in a Brazilian jiu-jitsu classroom setting, um, even though like because of 10th Planet guys, it does float around from time to time. But um, it was a punishment hold in these old professional wrestling moves, and uh, they called it the spread eagle, right? And it is one of many moves that's really just designed to encourage the person to pin themselves Right? It's less designed to make them say uncle, although it has that potential. Um, like 10th Planet guys would say, it's a test their flexibility issue, right? Like if they if they're inflexible and they tap to if they're inflexible and they tap to it, good for you. Um, if they're flexible and they can withstand it, then you at least turn it into a positional change to your advantage. But um, I do this submission from time to time in roles, particularly if I know the person is inflexible or less flexible than average. Sometimes I even do it to flexible people because I know ways to crank it and kind of make it work. But um, at the very least, I use it as an opportunity to switch positions to like a more advantageous position for me. And this is a nice little archival bit of um, example and proof that people did this kind of move from time to time, even though we don't see it quite as often as moderns.